Hey guys, welcome to the next episode in Let's Play Football Manager with, two, uh, with Brighton 2013 and as you can see, we have done it. We have won the league. I don't know how we've done this. Well, I do. We beat Man United by three points. It really was that close. You know, I mean, we looked a few seasons ago, we lost the title by three points to Manchester United. Now it was payback time. We got the title by three little points. Four points clear of Chelsea and then 12 clear of City there in fourth place but that is the big news of course you know i mean now you know it's it's been nearly eight years i think eight years since took over at brighton took them from the championship you know they are definitely promotion contenders that's for sure but to win the premier league in eight years obviously probably won't happen in real life but you know i mean i, I think it is fair to say the finances on this are very linear shall we say every year it's getting more and more realistic but as obviously it's a game so the finances aren't going to just represent you know it's like i'm going to give you a transfer budget of 30 million pounds and that's all you're going to get you can fix it very you can you know you can swivel it a bit but you can't do much else with it and it's like okay well yeah you know, and, and all the, these type things you know it just, the finance are really linear so obviously don't don't take this as thing and say right to gus Pyatt now saying oh look at this lad he's just got he's just got him um, actually do please <laughs> no i'm kidding um well yeah th th this is it i don't know how we've managed to do it but um Oh, we've, well, actually, I can, I can give you one little thing of how we've done it. It's We've converted those silly draws, as you can see, we've drawn four. I mean, ironically, actually, United have drawn 10 and City 13. Um, we, we've converted them draws into wins and losses. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, you or maybe it been the, the previous video before that, um, you, you take them draws, say, you know, you have six draws, say, more than you need or want. Um, that's six points. You convert, say, four of those to wins, that's 12 points. That's double your points. And obviously, you lose the other two, but you've got more points. And that's what's happened here. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we lost six games, which isn't great. I mean, United only losing the three. Um, but then, as you can see, the top four, the big four, shall we say, touch wood. I know I can see Arsenal are obviously out of that, but, you know, someone obviously was going to take a dive there. Um, and yeah, you know, Arsenal falling away, um, big jump there to, you know, the points as well, obviously, you know, like 20, 22 points, I think that is, uh, between us and Arsenal. And obviously, you know, you can see in the goals and the goal difference and all that, although our goal difference wasn't absolutely incredible, uh, that's not the point, you know, it's the results that matter. So let's go over the transfers real quick, just to uh, make sure that I have all these sorted out. Um yeah, uh, if these are just a few that are going to be going over uh, in the summer, we've got John Ruddy who's going to go back to Huddersfield. Well, not going back to Huddersfield, he is, oh, he is at Huddersfield now. Um, didn't work, wasn't very good, <laughs> just a poor goalkeeper. Uh, letting way, way too many goals, wanted first team football, and I said, sign, I'll just cut my losses with you, and just got rid of him. Then, of course, we've got this dipshit, this Italian wanker. Um, I realise obviously I've let, I let go of a four star player here, but I just I, I was sick of him and I let him go and I made a, a, a nil, I made nearly nine million pound profit, whatever. Um, you know sometimes these things happen. You are going to run into these things sometimes where you are going to get a petulant little brat of a player and you're going to have to let them go. And there he goes. And I've let that Werner, who is very injury prone actually, I think he only started like one game all um, all last season because he just kept getting injured um, and his then his match fitness really started to suffer because you know anytime you get injured his match, his match fitness would drop and by the time you get back all the way to his match fitness he'd be out for say so okay I'll, I'll, I'll pick up a scenario with Werner here um he'd get injured say he's out for two weeks then two weeks passes uh his match fitness then his condition is say 80 okay so he's going to need another week and a half before his he's going to play two reserve games for him to get to a half decent match fitness to so say you know he's 95 percent match fit that'll do me throw him into the team gets injured again out for another three weeks and it's like well <laughs> what do you want me to do you know so um yeah would have unlucky been unlucky with him but i don't think he's that good anyway so i'm not really too bothered um and uh obviously we've got athlete here now i've brought in a goalkeeper here now last time i talked about um a player um who this is difficult to say a player basically i don't like having two young goalkeepers two young you know because i mentioned that you know with felipe i was trying to remember his name i just called him a player um luis felipe who didn't complain sorry who did complain about not getting too many games because he's a young goalkeeper and i'm like well i can't give that many games to a young goalkeeper you're gonna let us down you just are that's what happens when you're a goalkeeper but this lad alessandro panucci here four and a half star potential 
that's more than Jack Butland, and he's 23. Jack Butland, incidentally, has been brilliant this season. I should just point out he's been absolutely phenomenal. He had several man of the match performances, and he's really starting to become you know the player that we all think he will be in the future. Obviously, it's taken him a few years, but uh, yeah, we'll go over them in a moment. Um, but yeah, I thought for one point one point five million and potentially you know fifteen years possibly worth of goalkeeper there. That's like, you know, what, what's that, 1.5? That's like £100,000 a year for a goalkeeper. It's worth a chance. It's worth a chance. So I don't know how I'm going to balance with Jack Butland. I might just do what I did on the regen save in Liverpool. Oh, excuse me, uh, regen save on Liverpool uh, in FM12, where I um, basically got managed to get the two goalkeepers. Remember, um, it was I think it was Ramirez and another goalkeeper, was it? It was Romero or something? I can't remember his name. There was the two Uruguayan, doesn't know there was, it was there was a Uruguayan goalkeeper, I forgot the name because there's so many now. Regen names going through my head. Um, <laughs> um and yeah, I basically had to sort of just rotate them. I'd, I'd literally just pick one goalkeeper, next one, next one, and just flip and rotate them every time because that's all I could do really. Uh, but anyway, let's get to the business here, go to the fixtures. So um We'll go from the end of, I'll say the start of February. So, uh, this is it here. We play Liverpool. Uh, I'll just go from this Liverpool game since, um, actually, well, I showed you that one last time, didn't I? Okay, we'll go to this game, which is against Benfica, the Champions League game. First knockout round. Um, really good game, this one. 2 1 at the Amex. Ganso and Marin with two goals, although they did, they, they did get an away goal, which meant, I think, technically, that means the tie is level. It was a very, very cagey affair. Benfica, by the way, on this are really, really good. I'll just show you the team uh, if you watched a, a video a few days back you will have seen that um they actually won the champions league you know let, let's just go through some of their players real quick you know just to give you an idea who i'm facing it uh this guy here is a really good player i've never paired him personally i mean if you have then fair enough but i'm just you know i don't really pay much attention to european football outside possibly you know outside of england and a little bit of la liga and a tiny tiny bit of Serie A. um yeah, you know, I'm just I'm ignorant to ignore me. Um but this Garmesh Garmash guy, he's really good on this. He's a very, very good little player. And he's ultimately the captain and like sort of their sort of Stephen Gerrard in a way, you know, he's a very, very good player. Nelson Oliveira, we all know about this guy, he's got really good potential. He's twenty nine, he is pretty good on this. Uh although he is starting to fall back a bit. Um they've got Davide Santon, you know, who at one time, you know, was one of the touted to be one of the best left backs in the world. I had him on loan last season, he did a pretty good job for me. Uh, ultimately, Benfica want to use him now. Um, well, so we got there's Vita Monterra or Monterra, uh, who is now at Paris Saint Germain. Um, I think must have had him on loan. Uh, Icos had him. He's grown, unfortunately. Oh no, Marrera, sorry, Montero. You know when your eyes play tricks on you. I saw that Vita or Vitor. Now, I've never seen that name before, and I see it M O, and I think, oh, there's my old player. Isn't that a coincidence? How the hell did I fuck that up? Anyway, um, I was thinking, hang on, I didn't play against him. <laughs> uh, they've also got Czech Tiotto, who, who I like as a pretty decent player. And, yeah, you get the general gist of, you know, Benfica's team. They're a pretty good team. Um, so, yeah, we got a good win there against them. Now, we played Leeds in the FA Cup fifth round. As you can see, we're actually, for the first time, or probably, yeah, for ages, really, having a really, really good run in the FA Cup. You know, we got QPR in the third round, just about beat them, admittedly. Birmingham and now Leeds. And we beat them very handsomely, as you can see, 4-1. So we haven't really had a particularly difficult run. You know, and, and that's kind of how easy it is on this game. You know, if you just sort of, because, you know, you are sort of looking at it from all the bird's eye view. I'm going to use a really crap analogy, but you are sort of looking at it from a bird's eye view. It's like three games, you know, as we can see in the fixtures here, three, four, five. We're through to the sixth round, and we've got a chance of winning this, you know, because we haven't had played anyone particularly difficult. You know, the last few years we've been playing... Um, Tottenham, United City, Chelsea, all in the early rounds, and it's like, oh, this is difficult, but we play, haven't played them yet, and ultimately that means we've got a good chance. Uh, Ferrer, who's really started to come on now, he looks really, really good, he's probably going to be a first-team regular alongside Ward Prowse uh, this season, uh, sorry, next season, I should say. Wellington also starting to really come good now, he's backed himself two goals there against Leeds. Uh, then we played West Brom, lost 2-1, this was uh, quite unfortunate. As, as you can see, you know, we just, we we took the lead and let it slip. We do, we do do this sometimes where we just, I don't know, we have the lead and then we just disintegrate. Once we get that lead, we just fall on our asses. I mean, if you like, I mean, look, contrast the two goalkeepers there. I mean, Guy Rowland and De Asembe, got it in one. 
having a game of his life apparently 9.2 9 that's incredible for a goalkeeper and Jack Butler there on six so I mean I've been praising him saying he's been really good of course you know no they're not going to be brilliant every single game but you know chances are they're going to be pretty good um yeah not the best game in the world so what am I going to do this um this guy here by the way I think she is a re unfortunately is a regen and he is freaking good let me tell you now, he is a bloody good player. He's Georgian. Um, David Iashvili. Um, the Villies. God, remember uh, Kuchinishvili, or whatever he's called. I can't even remember his name. He played for Blackburn, one of the funniest names ever. Um, but yeah, he, he's a quality player. He ran the team ragged in that game. I remember him. I was like, oh, screw you. I don't like you. Um, took uh, Arsenal to the Amex, and Ganso got two, and Mohamed Atale scoring. Uh, incidentally, he, uh, if you look here, uh, not really for big kickoff. Well, we're like two months away from the big kickoff. What? <laughs> anyway, um, he unfortunately got injured uh, in about March time, and he was out for the rest of the season. So he will disappear in due course, unfortunately, which is a bit of a letdown. But there you go. Uh, got a good, good uh, portion out of him. And then one one against Benfica. So we managed to go over them. Corte scored then. I thought, ooh, this is going to be tense. So I put everything to contain. And when I say Jack Bolton that the game was like here. Oh yes, roll reversal. 9.3, even doing better than the, uh, well, it's a different goalkeeper this time. He's not even on the bench. Oh, sorry, no, I'm thinking of the, no, I was the West Brom goalkeeper, I beg your pardon. Um, <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Um, yeah, Jack Bolton, as you can see there, going from a 6 rating at the West Brom game to a 9.3 in the Champions League. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, great job from him there. So we march on into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Meeting a very good Benfica team. And then we played West Brom again, getting a bit of revenge this time. 4-2 at the Amex. Mohamed Atale with two, Zaha and Mickey Farrell. We'll show you these goals. This is a really good game. This. I remember watching it um, thinking, oh, this is crazy. Ho Luis Jose Sanz there, look, former player, if you remember his name. I'll just show you... Um, yeah, I'll just sort of show you. I'll show you the quick fight three, the um, 15 minutes there, Ferreira and Atale with two quick goals. Um, incidentally, if you are just sort of tuning in or whatever for the first time, we're who the hell are all these players? Bear in mind now, this is two th we're getting into the 20s now. This is where a lot of regens are going to start popping up. So if you are confused by any of these names or, you know, you suddenly go on to, um, you know, you suddenly go on to the game and you're wondering where, like, oh, I can't find these players. The regens only uh, apply to my game. Every game... Um, uh, I, do, I will. I do. By the way, if you are experienced, I'm wondering why I'm having to say this. Honestly, people do ask me questions it's like, "I can't find this player on my game." It's like because he's a regen. <laughs> he only is um, simulated in my game, um, and you know he will only appear there. You'll get a different regen every time you load up a different game. It's just a random collection of letters and numbers and names being uh, assigned to each regen so yeah just to point that out and there's Mohamed Atale arriving 2-0 inside half an hour so just yeah I just want to say that very quickly and I've uh, got the least scores up there I had close <laughs> uh, I had that one up for the um the last game of the season which I'll go over in a moment and a slight lucky deflection there goalkeeper probably could have done better but Atale there getting three and as you can tell it was three nil in about 15 minutes overall so into the semi-finals the FA Cup and we keep having these sort of hangovers from the FA Cup. I don't know what it is. Like if you look here, apart from Millwall, which was really, well, not really easy, but, you know, reasonably easy. We beat Birmingham in the fourth round, lose the game after. Beat Leeds in the fifth round, lose the game after. Beat West Brom in the sixth round, lose the game after. I think he's starting to see a pattern here. Then we uh, brought Chelsea to the Amex and Marco Marin, obviously. I'll show you these two goals. Uh, scoring uh, against his former club. I think this may have actually... I can't remember which goal it was, but I think one may have been an absolute screamer or something. Incidentally, Chelsea have got that uh, amazing... Eng or, you know, potential uh, amazing England regen there, Paul McDonnell, who was um, a part of Man City. And I think Chelsea may have bought him. Um, who He also played for Liverpool and did quite well, you know, at a very young age. He uh, has potential. I'm not going to say he's going to be like Phil Knight, if you remember his name. Well done. But um, who was probably one of the best, probably the best regen I've ever seen. And yes, I put him ahead of my own regens. But check this out. He, he, what Marin does, he does these weird sort of angular runs where he'll look like he's going to run straight on. And he'll turn at like a fucking right angle. <laughs> I've never seen, well, I've seen players do it. But it's very difficult to do it. as if he twists his whole body. And... Uh, yeah, he's, it's very weird, sort of how Marin and a lot of other players do as well. But Marin does it in particular, where he basically just run, looks as if he's going to run in a straight line, and turns at a right angle, forty-five degrees, completely. Um, 
sorry, 90 degrees, I should say, 90 degree turn, <laughs> and then fires that in. So, yeah, uh, after 2 0 against Chelsea, Marco Marin, obviously, 50 goals, league goals for Brighton for him. And then we played Paris Saint Germain, who we, of course, played in the group stages of our own group this early, earlier this season. And we won 3 1. Now, if you just look real quick, uh, who when we actually played them um, at home, we beat them 2 0. This time, we managed to beat them 3 1. Um, Mohamed Atali scoring again Ferrer played Ferrer I thought I'll put a bit of faith in him and he repaid me immensely with this unfortunately they did get away goal Wilfred Zaha also scoring in there who can play on the wide by the way United fans by the way just a lot of people have been asking my opinion on Wilfred Zaha whose transfer has just gone through today or it will be going through today um, or some sort of fee has been agreed it's typical that a sign a player just as he signs for United obviously um, <laughs> yeah he is um, in my opinion Looks like a really good signing. No doubt Fergie will turn into a very, very good player. He is, in my opinion, Galaxy's better than Danny Welbeck, who I don't particularly rate at all. Um, he's okay, I guess. Um, he, I love his pace. I think he's got a really good um, you know, good shot on him. 20 years old. A lot of money for a 20-year-old, I admit. But you know, then again, you know, people aren't going to criticise United for that. If that was Liverpool, they would be absolutely going. Everyone would be going crazy about it. Oh, actually, not just Liverpool, anyone, actually. Um, but obviously, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm... I'm when I say Liverpool, it's because of the whole Andy Carroll thing. It's like, ooh, you're spending big money on a young England player again. You know, type of thing. So, um, yeah, uh, he's got great pace, so a good shot on him. He's a little bit rough around the edges still. I think he's going to be a bit of a rough house when he gets in there. You know, he'll start his first Premier League game, and no doubt he'll probably be a bit a bit rough, maybe. Although he is quite skinny, so I don't know. I think he is. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah, 2-1 against Forest here. That's just my opinion on Zaha. You know, take it or leave it. United fans, you don't care what a Scouser says to you. Um, yeah, Zaha and Ganso scoring to give us the win at Forest. And a good draw again in Paris as Wilfred Zaha scored uh, two leaders into our first semi-final. That was uh, 4-1 at that point. And I knew the game was over, so I sat them back. Um, and Jack Butland again not having a too good game. But I think I think the game is quite critical critical of goalkeepers. You know, you look you look at a goalkeeper and you think, oh, five point eight, that's not very good. It's just because he's let a goal in, I would assume. Or, you know, he's punched the shot away and it's fallen to a player. Now you can't do so much. You know, a goalkeeper can only do so much. He punches a shot away, it's come from thirty yards and it just so happens to land at the striker's feet, then yeah, okay, don't punch it that way, but at the same time, give the lad a break. There's only so much he can do. And then, so and then, this is going to be the first time <laughs> of uh, many, many more occasions we are going to be playing Manchester United. Why? Because we're going to play them not only in the FA Cup semi-final but also in the Champions League semi-final. And we lost this one, unfortunately. Um, the lads gave it a good go, but as you see, Craig Dawson was an absolute beast. Um, but I'll show you this one real quick. First trip to Wembley in god like eight years or something since we were in last in the fa cup final against qpr lenny nangis this regen here he's a really good little player he's got great pace on him potentially what wilfred zaha could be um you know if, especially if he's going to play him on the on the wing which he you know definitely can play there i think he'd potentially be a great winger sort of you know raheem sterling like um zaha but with a bit more of a finish on him um but this is a here as you can see that this guy's really good they've got tony cruz there and it's egerton which is a great name I thought he was just going to show it straight to the goal there. A lot of players try that sort of Suarez thing where they'll basically just run at the keeper and try to hit it off him or just through him. You know that goal Suarez scored against Sunderland a few years ago where basically he's at an impossible angle and just hammers it home and it's like you literally go, how did he do that? You know, you, say, you, know, you play special when you're saying that but there's a great ball there and a very, very cool finish from Nangis there uh, to put United in lead. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm not going to argue that. that was just a good finish. You know, there's only so much you can do against Manchester United, isn't there? Um, and then West Ham. And I thought, oh, dear, things going to go wrong again. Here's a hard Marin rescuing a point for us at uh, West Ham. Then we can play Cardiff and go over this little um, Welsh hoodoo, I think, to have. Because don't do very well against the Welsh clubs. Um, go for Zaha. I'll show you this late when I hear from Zaha. Uh, Will Buckley, incidentally, who I regret not being able to sign up for a new contract. I just couldn't find a place for him in the team. But any time I would bring him back into the team, he would do brilliantly. Um, and he'd score. So, unfortunately, he's gone to Everton. See so, yeah, that? Really nice stuff there. And Zaha with a very cool finish. Um, but, yeah, Will Buckley, unfortunately, he's gone to, gone to Everton. He went on a, on a Bosman, um, which basically means his contract is up. And, you know, they, they signed him up on a pre-contract. Um, and, yeah, unfortunately, he's gone. No doubt will score against me. Um, but I just couldn't find a place for him in the team. But he was so good. I, I don't know why I didn't play him more. 
Um, and then we went to Old Trafford to play United yet again in another semi-final, this time in the Champions League semi-final. Rodney Strasser grabbing his goal and Alexander Butner, two very unlikely sources. Butner against his former club, obviously. I'll show you these goals. I'll just show you a fact there are two goals. No one wants to see Manchester United's goals, do you? Of course you don't. Don't be silly. Um, <laughs> uh, if it ever wants to load. See, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't want to do it. No, I'm not kidding. Um, so Butner obviously grabbed us a bit of a... Um, bit of a lifeline there if it was 4-1 I probably would have said game over straight away before even heading to the Amex but uh, Butner going in there and I'll show you this so as you can see we were 3-0 down Burton and Goddard this Goddard by the way is absolutely brilliant player um, there's a goal I'm not sure where it is or where it was I can't remember where I saw it um, but he's, I think he is a regen yeah no he is a regen and uh, he skinned about four players and just ran a a mark. Are we going to see the... Go Thanks. God. He just basically ran a mark on this defense. It wasn't against us, um, but it was something else. And look at that. Great time from Strasser. And just hammers it in. I was waiting for him to... I was like... When he was running along the box there, I just stabbed my monitor. Oh, dear. <laughs> when he was running across the box there, I was like, hit it, hit it, hit it. And then he did hit it. And I was like, right. I thought he was going to whack into the goalkeeper, but I was waiting for him to hit it. Just... Ugh. Hate the way to do that. But as you can see there, if you look at the bottom of the report there, Butner scores for Brighton. Look at that last thing of the game really um, and here we go so you know at this point I'm just overload thinking just get something and that's good break for Cuenca there he is arriving Butner gets us a lifeline can we really take them back to the Amex and get two goals if we get the two goals there and they don't score we um, potentially go through to the Champions League final it's only two goals it's doable we have done it before uh, in the middle of that we had a Premier League game against Sunderland Liam Bridcott with the goal I'll show you that now I love how, like, sometimes it'll load goals very quickly, you know, no problem at all. And then sometimes this pinwheel will stay up for about uh, 10 minutes. If, if you're wondering, incidentally, the pinwheel is basically the, the Apple Mac equivalent of um, of the egg timer, basically. Uh, or, you know, I, I think it is anyway. I, I don't know, that's what I've noticed. It, it apparently used to mean, like, a crash or something, but it doesn't anymore, haven't it? I've, it's never crashed on me. Uh, but as you can see, once again, losing the semi-final to Manchester United, the red dot indicating we did not qualify for the final, and it meant a um, Manchester derby final. Typical. <laughs> Wellington and Cuenca with the two goals. Unfortunately, that goal did mean we went out. Edison Cavani put them in the front, in front, 5-4 in aggregate. Yeah, so unfortunately, we just couldn't, you know, get that extra. I mean, it was Cavani. that This kind of killed us off, to be honest. I'll show you the goals. Um, Cavani here I mean as you can see Wellington hit back straight away but at that point you know it was like well is it you know is it really going to happen you know <laughs> I mean don't get me wrong it's the Champions League you know anything can happen but at the same time you know you've got to be realistic here I'm yeah, just going to pump it up now oh, God, come on <laughs> no one wants to see this goal get on with it <laughs> but uh, I have to re I've really got to question what um Craig Dawson was doing that. He just sort of, he, yeah, he gets goals out of them, but he doesn't like do anything. He just sort of swivels around them a bit, you know. And any time like that happens, there, you know, you saw the player there I'll do that. I thought there was going to be a penalty for a sec, but this is really good stuff from Wellington. Really, really good finish. Very similar to um, Fernando Torres's first goal um, for Liverpool. You know, the goal he scored against Chelsea. Very similar to that, I thought there. So, hmm. I'll say similar. I mean, <laughs> could be anything really. Um, but this is good. I mean. You know, this is a few minutes later. That was straight away. And this was, like, literally a few minutes later. And Cuenca just comes out of nowhere. He's been very quiet this season. He hasn't really done a whole lot. I mean, he's been... I mean, quiet. Um, and he hasn't played that much. But at that point, I'm thinking, no way. Because if we get another goal, we're through. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's two semi-finals And two, we lost to the same bloody team. And it just so happened to be Manchester United. And then I thought, okay, so that we're going to win this league. We are going to win it. So... Um, Will Buckley got his two and he really made a strong finish to the season Buckley was great so James Ward-Prowse gave us the win over Man City 3-1 against Everton Buckley scoring again as you can see Zahar and Wellington who's really coming to his own now and then this was the final game basically these two games meant that all we had to do was win against Villa that's all it was I was going to do this live I did consider doing the commentary for this but it looked you know I, I, I sort of considered it and then I thought, it's a bit out of place, isn't it? It's sort of, you know, if I just load up and go, hey guys, we're one game away from winning the title. And it's like, well, where's that come from? 
<laughs> you know, um, and I didn't want to do the review first because the season wasn't technically over. But you know, disaster hit straight away. They went up inside two minutes. I'm thinking, nah, this ain't happening. This isn't going to happen. Uh, but for, for, thankfully, you know, Ganso just pops up here in a few minutes and uh, sells uh, sells everything. But at this point, one 0 down, we dropped down to second. It's United. Um, they will now lead them. I'm thinking no way, but a lovely swivel there. Silver shot from Ganso and uh, goalkeeper can't really do anything, and that was level. And they've settled. <laughs> and things will get a little bit better in a minute, but um, yeah, at this point, I think we actually went top uh, because United went both Chelsea and Chelsea lost 5 1, believe it or not, to Newcastle. I don't know where that came from. Uh, Newcastle very average as well, not particularly great, and then to Hart with a lovely header. Um, to put us the lead, and at that point, it was like, yes, that's it, with ours, we have won it, because Villa just. They just deflated at this point. They just went completely. I don't think they even... They had, like, one more chance the whole game. That was right at the end. Um, and, yeah, you know, so... Uh, yeah, Chelsea lost. That was strange. New, uh, United went down early. I think they were playing... I think they were playing Wigan. Uh, and they basically... They, they they went down, but they eventually won. I think they also won five. All three of the final games that involved title decide, uh, t potential title winners all finished 5-1 to the home team and absolutely pathetic mark in there it has to be said from Villa 50 goals for Brighton for Will Buckley on his final appearance and then this was the absolute icing on the cake I bought Andrew Crofts on for the last 10 minutes he, uh, or 15 minutes he was retiring at the end of the game he was going to be leaving and then ultimately retiring so I thought what way you know better fairy tale finish than what happens here and I'll just sit back and watch this brilliant Former captain, you know, captain for a good six, seven, eight years. Um, gets you know goal on his final appear, uh, final professional appearance as a footballer for his club. You know, the one he's captain for ages. Fortunately, Ganso took over now as he was getting a bit old and couldn't really hold down a first team place. But yeah, wow, <laughs> great end to a strange, very strange season. We could have done a treble, but not happened. Man United's were still too good for us. And I think that kind of sums everything up. You know, when we play United, anything can happen in the league. But I think in the cups. They have the better of us. But we certainly have better of them in the league. I think it's fair to say. Wigan, Sunderland and Stoke going down. Stoke keep going down. I think they're like the new West Brom. <laughs> you know, the sort of just bobbing up and down. Yo-yo team every time. Um, we'll go over the stats real quick. Uh, so yeah, there's the matches. Very few is interested. You can see uh, United won 5-1 against Wigan. Um, that Yeah, they were level. They got drawn. Were they level? No. Well, that's not right. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, 5-2. Rodrigo scored in the last minute. <laughs> Missed that. Um, yeah. There you go. See that? There's your uh, there's your stuff. So stat wise, now Z Zahar obviously didn't have a mad season. Marco Marin got very impressive, fifteen assists and six man of the matches. Um, but goal wise, we'll show you now. This is obviously for all competitions. Oh, I won't do it. <laughs> Hang on, let me just get it here. Uh, stats, goals. There we go. Seventeen goals for Zahar. Seventeen for Marin. That's very impressive. 15 for uh, Ganso, Markovic with 14, he was injured for a bit, Atale came in of course and played about two months and then got injured, uh, got eighth, very impressive, Wellington, debut season, I think it was, was his debut season, I can't even remember, you know, 18 year old Brazilian, five star potential, yep, debut season, eight goals at 18 years old, coming to a foreign country on another continent, eight goals in your debut season, 18, that's not bad, I think you will agree, um, and yeah, that's that really. Uh, Will Buckley of course finishing strong there. He'll be buggering off to Everton um, very soon, as you can see. Holidays, loan, wanted, bid, transfer, reserve. So yeah, there you go. So he's going. He's thirty-one now, so he's probably got just just getting over the hill. Um, and yeah, if you just look at the ages real quick, I'll just like, give you the ages team. We've got a few youngsters here who are going to be coming through. We've got uh, Darren Spice, who is that will show you their potential as well. Okay, ability, can't really see. Can I, actually, no, I won't do it. If it doesn't show the ability, I'm definitely not going to be able to see the, the other ones. Uh, but basically, got the age here. We've got some really good you know, potentials all the way up to, say, uh, I mean, James will proud. You know, he's 26 now. Markovic is young, obviously. Dinier's young. Butland, obviously, got ages to heart. All those players, Kyle Norton, 32. And then Marin, uh, sorry, Butler and Marin. You know, these are players now you know, who are slowly going to road away for the regens. Um, but yeah, you know, you can begin to see the uh, you know the sort of team now has taken shape completely. Now we're going to sort of get rid of the older ones, bring in the regen. So yeah, that will do it for me then. So um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will be back then in February twenty twenty two.
to do it all again. See if we can win two in a row. <laughs> I'll see you next time.